Hey guys, it's the Friction here, Tag It Tank 1 2. However, you can call me, I don't really care. And welcome back to World of Tanks. And today, this video is a bit of a rant. Uh, we're going to be talking about a, a certain tank and a certain tank line that I've been playing recently. And um, I'm going to be talking about the reason why I'm currently a bit annoyed and angry at wargaming and it all has to do with the GSOR AVR FS right here. This is the British tier 9 light tank that I have unlocked maybe about a month ago and I've decided to buy it very recently because um, there was actually an on track to the Manticore and I think there's still no there's actually no on track right now but there was an on track, uh, on track previously so you were able to get this vehicle for a discount, you know, not pay the full 3 million, but like something along the lines of 2.1. And um, I decided to buy the vehicle since I had to get to it anyway after the LHMTV, which was a pretty atrocious tank before that. So the thing was, I, um, I knew that the LHMTV, I knew what I was getting myself into when I first started playing the light tanks. The British light tanks and um, to be fair I love playing light tanks it's the most entertaining class for me because it is very high risk and very high reward and you really need to be on your a game if you want to have a very very good game in your light tanks especially if you're trying to free mark your vehicles such as the t49 that I almost free marked and the Sheridan which I did free mark with the uh, with the derp gun <laughs> that's another story but yeah, the g -Sor is basically where I cut the losses and I just say I'm not going to be doing this any longer because I've been playing a couple of games in the g -Sor and I already know in which direction it's going to be going. Now, first and foremost, when I played the LHMTV, I knew that it was not a good tank, but somehow still at tier 8, we were able to do, you know, just well enough. It was not, it is terrible, but it's not as terrible as the g -Sor. The g -Sor, especially if you compare tier 8 to tier 9, that is a huge step up. In a lot of tank um, development, stage 9, tier 9 is like basically a lower tier 10. And for some vehicles, the tier 9s are even just as good as the tier 10s. If we look at the object for 30, for example. That could be just another tier 10 that is currently playing at tier 9. And if you're playing the G-Sor, you're getting a vehicle that is just as small as, it, as the LHMTV and kind of, you know, plays in the same role in the same kind of category. It's a small tank with a very hefty gun that can do a lot of damage. We know that this vehicle will not have enough DPM. We know that its firepower is atrocious. We have a 1,444 DPM with the top gun. No, this is not the top gun. It's the 85 millimeter gun. But you can see right here, you'll get the 90 millimeter cockerel um, gun that will allow you to have a rate of fire of 9.5 rounds. No, 6.32 rounds per minute. That's a 9.5 second reload time. And uh, you get an engine that has uh, 100 horsepower more. And that might make a, a difference, but I'm not sure. So the thing is that I've noticed with the, the British light tanks, um, the LHMTV and this thing, the tracks, if you're turning on the spot, there is no um, direct turning. So that means that the other track is not turning in the opposite direction, which allows you to turn your tank a lot faster. Now, this is a vehicle, I haven't really read the description, but I guess it's a vehicle that was developed in the 60s. And even the AMX 30 series already had that, which were developed, I think, in the, in the uh, late stages of the 50s, early 60s. And this vehicle does not have that ability. What you end up with is a light tank that has um, terrible mobility because it has a huge turn rate. Even though it tells you it has a traverse speed of 49.13 degrees per second, that is absolutely wrong. It just turns really, really slowly. It's like the Burrasque. But it does not have a good gun. It does not have the great mobility. It's not fast enough. And it's just... 
it's a pain to play, especially if it's if it's stock and it's just no fun. This is really the first tank that I have played in World of Tanks where I do not get any joy from playing it. And to be fair, the only reason people are playing this is to get to the Manticore. Because the Manticore, on the other hand, it is probably going to be in the same category, like the tracks don't turn fast enough. But at least, at least the Manticore has this crazy ass gun, which is just something very unique for a tier 10 light tank. And it is so frustrating because basically for me, it's like they added in a tier nine vehicle that cannot stand on its own. That is just an a, a, a emplacement to add into the game, a, like a hindrance to get you to tier 10. And the only way you can get through this if you either like really enjoy getting nothing done and just being completely useless on the battlefield for a lot of the time, or you, I don't know, um, you know, you just put out your wallet, you just pull out your wallet and you pay the, the sum that they are uh, asking of you to get past this vehicle. Now, I am lucky if uh, we look into uh, my blueprints, I have a shit ton of blueprints, I can just rush through this entire piece of trash. And that is something that I'm probably going to be doing because I will no longer play the G-Store like that. If you see the three mark levels are at 1,390 damage per game and I'm at a 2k, there is something wrong with the performance of this vehicle. And um, just to clarify this, we're going to go into a game where we're going to check out real fast just how bad this vehicle is. And um, we could compare it to another light tank at the same tier. Just imagine, like, you're playing this vehicle, right? And uh, you're playing this, and you're playing with your team, and you're playing against an enemy team that also has a light tank. Look at what kind of disservice you're putting your team into when you're, like, facing all of these vehicles at tier 9 that are just better than you. And uh, we can just, we, uh, I don't know, we have to fully upgrade all of them, but we can compare it just, you know, to put it into perspective, what kind of trash you're playing right here. Um, okay, because I own that, it's already top tier. Uh, we own this one as well, but we don't have it in the garage anymore. I think it can save it. You always have to accept it and apply it. Oh my God, this is so annoying. And uh, right here, the RU251, same with the T54 Lightweight. Okay, this one we actually do still own. And the EBR90 we still own as well. So, if we just take a look at the numbers, you can see that this vehicle is, is just, it's an absolute joke. These numbers do not represent the real position that this vehicle is at uh i think this gun right here it's it's the howitzer so it's the launcher that doesn't make a lot of sense if we put it in there but it's terrible all of the the reload times on these vehicles are just so much better look at all of them even if we put on the top gun on this vehicle even if we spec it out completely it's a complete shit show and uh, we're gonna just go through them real fast and we're gonna check out some gameplay and then I'm gonna just cut it with this tank because I will no longer play this vehicle. I just, I don't have, I don't have a lot of fun playing it and I'm playing this game to have fun um, as well. And it's just, it's ridiculous. So this tank has a 1,500 DPM. The T49 almost has a thousand more DPM. The Amex 1390 uh, auto loader has 400 more dpm even the ebr like a, a a tank with wheels that is just supposed to run around zoom around maybe shoot every single every couple of uh, of um, seconds and you know just run around circles around your opponent still has a better dpm than this vehicle but this thing has mobility this thing does not have the same mobility as the ebr 90 has so this is a complete joke. You have the penetration, right? You have like 20 millimeters of more, more pen than the T49. You have almost 30 millimeters more pen than the AMX 30, uh, 3090. You have basically 
60 or uh, 50 millimeters more pen than the EVR90. And all this doesn't really matter because basically what you're doing in a light tank is still, you know, if you have to fight, um, you're probably going to be engaging them from the side or from the rear. And if you're engaging them from, from the front, you still have gold premium ammo. So this, it, it just absolutely shows you it's, it's terrible because it doesn't allow you to be in any kind of way competitive while you have 35 degrees of gun elevation which allows you to aim up like almost at the sky but why do you want to do ha to have that like are you going to be on a cliff uh, there's there's like physics now you cannot aim up anymore um or you know stick on a hill and then aim upwards so you have like the uh, reverse uh, gun depression because then you have the elevation I mean, the aim time is good. I mean, it's great. The dispersion is good as well. It's an accurate gun, but it just it doesn't really fit into the category and it's terrible because you, you do not want to be a sniper in a light tank. No one wants to have that. Well, you're going to have a little bit more armor than all of these vehicles, except for the T-50 Lightweight, which has 180 millimeters of turret armor. I didn't know that. That's pretty crazy. But... 70 millimeters is still not going to stop anything. It's a light tank. It's going to get wrecked by anything. So armor is not important unless you're T-54 lightweight, which obviously has a much better kind of position. Then we take a look at the horsepower. Damn. We have basically much more horsepower on every single vehicle than this vehicle. I know it's just 8 tons weight max, um, but... You know, 65 kilometers per hour, it sounds great. Like, top speed, it's one of the fastest or one of the, like, in the upper echelons. But the problem is just the traverse speed is this horrendous because it doesn't have the ability to turn on the spot. It really needs to make, like, a... It, it just... Um, they just basically uh, clog up one of the tracks or they, they break one of the tracks and you slowly turn your vehicle and that's just not good enough, sorry. This vehicle needs a major overhaul, the entire British light tank tree needs a major overhaul and they just need to do that sometimes in the near future because it's a joke, because no one wants to, no one wants to play uh, light tanks such as these uh, if they are this terrible and everyone is just gonna quit or everyone is just gonna you know skip them if they are if they have the ability but i mean okay you have crazy good values you know uh, being stationary or being like moving um your camo values are pretty damn good a lot of these vehicles don't have crew on them at the moment a lot of these vehicles are not in my garage they don't have like the, the equipment that i have on the gsor so it's not an accurate representation um the WZ-132 is an accurate representation because I think the crew is in it as well. So the concealment values are quite impressive. But it doesn't help you if you cannot, you know, just being well hidden is not going to have um, the best or give you the best games ever. You still need to rely on your gun. You cannot just rely on being not seen by everyone the entire game. So basically... I have enough of the G-Sor, I'm going to be skipping this vehicle and we're going to jump into a gameplay just to show you guys what kind of a trash tank this is. Okay, so the game that I've prepared for you guys um, is on the map Mannerheim line and basically like the, the two areas that light tanks usually go to at the start of this match are like this bush here. Or maybe somewhere over here to spot the crossing of the the medium tanks and the light tanks that are going up to the north. But my plan is to exterminate the other G sword. Thankfully, it's G sword in the opposing team, um, and to spot some of the tank destroyers that like to hide up here at C7 and 8 to cover our advance of our heavy tanks that are definitely going to be going into this gorge. Now at the same time, it's a bit unnerving that we have two medium tanks going with them and only a single T-55A going to the north. But you can see that the g -Sor on the enemy team had the same idea as we did and um, he moved into a very aggressive spot where he can spot them crossing but at the same time he's kind of exposed and they can actually, you know, spot him or shoot him. Now the problems that I wanted to talk about with this tank um, 
are really i mean i'm not trying to exaggerate them but they're like they're breaking at tier 9 like they're not allowing you a lot of leeway now if we take a look at this batch at 25t right here obviously we knew that he was going to move up and maybe we should have moved a little bit sooner but we still had like the hope that he was not going to do that but still you could see that the turn time of this vehicle just take a look at the turn time of this vehicle i just used my hand break right there it is so slow a vehicle such as this that is so lightweight should not turn as slowly as this one does and you can just see look at the look at the radius that you have to take how much of a turn you have to make to turn your vehicle completely i know it is very small i know it's very difficult to spot but still on the other hand you know wouldn't you much rather have a vehicle that might be a little bit bigger but still you know good at um good at turning and maneuvering what does all this top speed bring you if you cannot turn your tank around it's basically just like driving in a straight line so right there we spot the batch at 25 tap and uh, we put one shell into him we got lucky that no artillery was looking at us because i was kind of spotted by basically was just looking for a, a second shot on the batch at 25 t and um, now i'm trying to get into the position again to spot the object 704 and now i mean look at that that is just the turn rate right there and it is it is pretty atrocious and now we're going to be sitting in here we're going to spotting the object 704 and unfortunately our 295 is probably not going to survive this encounter with that object 704 he gets knocked out by the uh, 268 another soviet tank destroyer pretty unfortunate that was probably a high explosive shot because it sounded like it exploded on his face so we're running around with with this vehicle right here and um, i've decided to actually go to the north and mobility wise as you could see right there because of the lack lack of um you know turn speed and uh basically your your tracks just being or making your tank very unmovable we almost crashed down into that little um ice lake or whatever it is called a pond and we almost sunk our battleship but now you can see this is like a, an important a, uh, like an important part of the game where we need to look into the north so that they don't come around and flank us or we push in while our heavy tanks decide to go for their base but at the moment like obviously you know pushing into the enemy base with um, spots such as C8 and uh, A8, A0, um, you can actually hide pretty well and you can still do a lot of damage to an advancing army as we have right there. So I decided to move up because I see that the T55A and the UDES are coming with me and just look at that turn time, how long it took me to get my vehicle moving forward. If you are in a vehicle such as this and you have like great camo, it's all good and dandy, right, if you're hidden in a bush. But as soon as you get spotted and you need to turn your tank towards a certain direction, that is where the enemy will pick you off. Same goes for right here. Because of this ridiculous bad turn time, we were just <laughs> moving into this rock like, you know, like a, a complete idiot, although we saw the rock. And then also because you're low weight your your uh you know your uh slow your slow ass uh you cannot really crush any tree because it will really slow you down <laughs> and all in all this tank i mean it does have great um gun depression right here this was a massive misplay by us i mean 234 damage right here i mean it's not bad um it's the it's the stock gun 232 millimeters of pen it's not bad either but right here you can see we make a, a a big mistake we move backwards into the tree and the artillery picks us off now because when you get spotted in a certain location and um you kind of um you know 
aren't able to turn fast enough to get away, artillery will usually strike you because you're a light tank, you're very easy to penetrate and artillery will definitely get an easy kill off of you. So artillery will do that because also you're the eyes of the team. We were lucky that this game we had no real competition from the enemy G -Sor, Um so that we, you know, were able to still do kind of the spotting that we usually were doing. But it just shows you that the potential that the GSOR has is very limited. It's a tank that might be doing very well on Malinovka in a, in a single bush. But with the, with the uh, mobility that you have, or the lack of the, um, the mobility, therefore, rather, I, I talk like that, um, you won't really be able to, to do a lot with that thing. This game still ended up being a win. I think our total damage output was something on, on the line of, um, as you can see right here, uh, yeah, something along the lines of uh, 1,500, maybe 1,600. But yeah, that is what you can expect when you're playing the G-Sword. Unless you're able to hide in a bush somewhere far away and you can just spot the enemies, you might get a lot of spotting damage. This tank probably is quite easy to pick up a 3 mark in if you are just a very passive scout, a very defensive kind of scout, but it's just not a lot of fun to play. Because light tanks, they need to be fast, they need to be maneuverable, and this tank is just not very maneuverable at all. So I would highly advise against playing this vehicle if you can. Um, I would skip this line completely. There are a lot of other light tanks, a lot of, uh, and a lot of other scouts that are a lot of fun to play. Um, and I think the British light tank line is not worth it. This is basically a review a year after they have been introduced into the game. And still a year later, they're not very good. They're not a lot of fun to play. And um, I don't think that Wargaming are going to be doing anything for that matter of fact, because yeah, they're already in the game, they're not premium, and uh, people don't care. So yeah, my final verdict is that uh, the British light tanks are absolute garbage uh, at tier 8 and tier 9. Uh, I hope that the Manticore is somewhat more interesting, it has a huge gun, which you cannot say about any other light tanks. Um, so that might just be interesting or the redeeming factor of the vehicle, but to be fair, I'm not sure if that is even worth it, because if it has the same problems with maneuverability that this vehicle has, I just don't see any future in, you know, playing the British light tanks. And uh, yeah, Wargaming have screwed up massively on the British light tanks. Balancing department was doing a shitty job, and I have to be fair, the balancing department has been doing a shitty job for the last two, three years with all the vehicles that have been added, all the things that have been changed. Um, a lot of things are still work in progress, but Wargaming, I don't know. I kind of am disappointed with this line, especially. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion. As always, put it in the comments down below. I'll uh, respond and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.